Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching from. We're glad that you're here today with us on the Visual Lounge. We are continuing our 10-week series about creating tutorial videos. Who knew, really, who knew there was so much to talk about? And today's show is no exception because we have, if I dare say, two experts, masters at Camtasia. They have, I don't know, thousands of hours and maybe a million hours, I don't know how many hours, tons of hours of experience. And they have, they've done it all at TechSmith in terms of creating video tutorials and creating videos and webinars and things like that. So we're gonna be talking with them. You get to ask questions, so go ahead and do that. Before we do that though, just before I get to their introductions proper, make sure if you're learning something today, make sure you're telling people about the Visual Lounge. Get them to listen on podcasts, whether they're on Apple or Spotify or you know, Google or wherever they're listening. We'd love to have you guys listen in. Or of course you can always watch us over on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe, get those notifications. So you know, whenever we go live on Thursdays at 2 PM. So here we go. Let's dive into today's episode. We got two fantastic guests. Like again, I can't say enough good things. So first of all, Jason Vlad is an instructional designer, master trainee, trainer, and you may even recognize him as a voice of numerous TechSmith videos. As a former classroom teacher, he finds joy in teaching and training people on all things TechSmith and creating helpful content that can be consumed as needed. Our other guest, that's right, two guests today. Ryan Aish is an instructional designer on the TechSmith customer education team. He creates video tutorials and course materials to help customers learn how to successfully use TechSmith tools. And just as an aside, Ryan's someone I've had the privilege to know at TechSmith for a very many years now. We're, it's kind of actually insane how old we're getting, uh, but he is a fantastic person. Both are fantastic people. And both of these gentlemen are extremely knowledgeable and talented at what they do. They bring years of expertise about video creation to our show today. And I count myself lucky as able to be able to work with them and to know them and to consider them friends. And with that said, let me welcome Ryan Aish and Jason Vlad to the Visual Lounge. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Jeez, Dude, thanks, man. Matt. That was intense. <laughs> we yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. Well, you guys, you guys definitely deserve it, and so we're we're really glad here. So I I, I think it's important. To, I, I I can't emphasize enough that like you guys, when it comes to tutorials, I, I mean you've done it probably just about all along the way at some point. Ryan, you you made some of the original Camtasia tutorials back with Camtasia seven and eight. Now you've been you know you've done other things in between. Then uh, Jason, you were a product manager at one point. For Camtasia, mm -hmm. you've you've been making tutorials and doing training all over the country, and dare I say, even some of the world, for our customers. So it's, it's really great to have you guys here. So we're excited to see what kind of questions come in today. But where I want to start, so let's start with a we're gonna we're just gonna dive right in here. You guys are making all this content, right? It's great, it's fantastic. Uh, you're doing everything from like kind of short one-offs to high touch, high polish tutorials that are gonna get you know. Uh, hundreds of thousands of views and are going to be essential for people to learn the product. You might be doing webinars and more. Uh, so how do you decide what to even like what you're going to make and how, what format it's going to take of all those options? Where, where do we even start to make those decisions? Jason, you want to start? Uh, that's yeah, that's, that's a tremendous question, man. That's actually something that our team uh, the customer education team here at TechSmith, we struggle with that, right? There's everything from, like you said, these really high polished videos that are going to reach the masses. Uh, those tend to live on the top, above the fold on our tutorial page. Uh, we've done everything from um, points of interest from people for little tiny topics about different parts of our products. We do our webinars, which we then section off into little things that are more uh, casual, off the cuff, but deciding what method and which style of video to make that that's a constant challenge that we actually meet on and discuss on, on a pretty regular basis. So, so tell me what, what goes into those conversations? So like Ryan, maybe when, when you're in that meeting and you're talking about those things, what comes to your mind about like, Hey, these are kind of criteria I'm looking for when it's going to be something maybe bigger and higher work versus quick kind of one-offs. Um, yeah. So I guess if, a if a new release is coming out, a lot of times we will we will look at what's already created in in our our tutorials already there uh, that can um, educate the user on the product, or do we need to create something new? Maybe it's a new feature and things like that. So we look at what we feel like maybe the the customers are going to utilize or find the most valuable, and those we may spend a little bit more time on to try to to walk them through. Um, the understanding of this this tool, this this workflow, whatever it might be, um, 
And other, as Jason mentioned, other times, if it's, it might just be a quick hit uh, tutorial where we would not polish it as much and maybe push it out on YouTube. Maybe it doesn't live quite on our TechSmith tutorials landing page or things like that. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think with the Camtasia release, we, we did a variety of things with, um, with some new tutorials. We had some playlists created. We did some what we called quick tip videos with no audio uh, narration. It was just some uh, music playing with, with kind of a step-by-step -step, um, process. So we tried some, some new things there and we're always looking to try new things. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Jason, I mean, I guess what else, besides what Ryan said, what else is going through your mind in that, that kind of decision-making process? Anything else? It's, it's a lot around how much time do we have and which audience are we trying to reach, right? So we know that there are people that want to learn everything there is to know about our products. They want to sit down and just consume, consume, consume. And yet there's other people that use Camtasia and Snagit where they just want to learn one thing really quick because maybe they're in the throes of a project right now or they're tasked with something or they're facing a challenge. So we're trying to, we're trying to make both of those pieces of content. We want them both to be of high quality. Uh, we want to enjoy the uh, creation process and we want it to be consumable and enjoyable for the person watching it. So there's all these different considerations. Sometimes it's who's going to make it, whose voice should be in it, whose eye is better towards this detail, whose workflow on our team does it best match so that when they're saying those things and they're showing people how to use it, it's authentic. Uh, it'd be really easy if it was just like a flip a switch and say, okay, Ryan, you take this one and I'll take this one. And our other teammate, Chandra, who I believe was on mm -hmm. uh, a, couple a couple episodes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we all, this, these are constant conversations and it really boils down to timing and, and what we want the end result to be. Uh, as, as in Ryan was saying, like, how much time are we going to commit to it? Is it going to be scripted? Is it going to be off the cuff? Uh, is it going to live on the tutorial page exclusively? Is it going to live in YouTube uh, and on our channels? We've got a couple different channels associated with TechSmith. All those things uh, come into play. Uh, I would say ultimately it comes down to timing. When are these things needed and when uh, are people going to find it most helpful? And with the releases, that tends to be uh, kind of a roller coaster ride as we're preparing, as the teams are constantly iterating on what the products can do. Yeah, never, never shortage of things that change during, uh, if anyone's been in a part of a software launch, things are always kind of in flux and changing. So, so it seems like you've got all these decisions. It's probably really easy, I would imagine, to get overwhelmed. I imagine even some of our audience is thinking, oh my gosh, that's so many decisions. How do you, how do you manage that? What advice would you guys give to someone who is maybe feeling overwhelmed with their own backlog of videos that they might need to make, or, I mean, it apl probably applies to training in general. So is there mm -hmm. something that helps you to, to keep this in focus and perspective and not get overwhelmed? Because I, you know, I, I think what happens, at least for me, I'll just speak personally is I get to the point where it's like, there's too much and then, then nothing happens. Right? So what advice would you guys want to give to us? Jason, what's the quote you said the other day? Uh, during the webinar about perfect and being the worst enemy or something oh, like that. It's something I've gleaned over time, right? Like don't let perfection be the enemy of done is something we've talked about quite often. Mm -hmm. um, I think to answer this is something I learned from Ryan a long time ago. Uh, and that was, you don't have to try and boil the ocean, right? You don't have to try and complete everything at once. There's a real value, especially in creating something as, seemingly complex as a tutorial video is chunking up that process. And we know there are definitive parts of the videos that we need to make. There's a scripting and a review process. There's a voiceover and a review process. There's the visual component and a review process and the combination of all those things put together. Tackle one at a time and get it to a state where you feel comfortable with it, right? So there's a lot to cover and a lot of things to think about but just compartmentalize just a little bit. Uh, I almost hate to say the word silo, but when you're focusing on a singular project, maybe just focus on that one thing. I tend to focus on the audio, on the, on the voiceover. I'm not a great writer, so I script what I think, pass it around the team and let everybody give feedback. I take which parts I want to take, which parts I wanna leave out, and then I record the voiceover. And when the voiceover is done, I feel like a million bucks because that is such a huge component of the video. The rest just kind of flows in its place, but I have to get over that initial hump. So I pick the part that is both the most challenging for me writing mm -hmm. and the most enjoyable, the voiceover. 
and see what comes from that. Well, I do want to share a comment from our, our, our YouTube side of things. And uh, this is Garth Shaner on YouTube said regarding the effort put into TechSmith tutorials. So he says, and it shows we appreciate all the thought put into the wonderful tutorials and videos you folks produce, which kudos to, to you guys and to the rest of the team. I, I mean, I think it's, it's, I think you're, I love what your advice you're giving here. I love this idea of focus on, pick something, focus on it. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean you can't just do audio. You can't just do voiceover, but if you break it down into those steps, that definitely seems super helpful. So mm -hmm. one of the things when we were talking and you guys were, we were kind of planning, you know, themes mostly for, for today's show. One thing that came up is the idea of a tiered system for planning out your tutorials. And, you know, because obviously if you've got all these things, not everything, not every tutorial is going to get the same amount of love and effort and time and devotion. So can you talk to us about what it means as your team is tearing these out? So, you, you know, you go into this process. It sounds like you get together, you talk about this, but uh, explain, one of you explain to us, if you will, the, how you create a tiered system and which I'm guessing is a prioritization system for your, for your videos, right? Like I, prioritization of effort, time, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. end quality, if we can say, I mean, they're all, you guys make just, you guys are really good about making low quality stuff that actually feels very high quality. So <laughs> I don't know if that's fair, but so. We'll take it. We appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to explain yeah, I, it? I, how about if I start it, Jason, and you can clean it up. Does that sound okay? okay. <laughs> Perfect. Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. We had an, I had our team has an idea of a tiered approach with our tutorials, tier one, tier two, and tier three. The tier one is kind of what you would see on our, um, if you were to go to our TechSmith tutorials right now, we'll say Camtasia, and you would click on um, one of the tutorials you see there up at the top, kind of the getting started ones where, where we spend um, a lot of time with, with scripting it out. We record audio and try to get it as high a quality as possible. We do our screen recording. We run it through a, a review process, kind of like what Jason was talking about from our team, getting feedback on it. We make iterations to it as needed. And I'll throw something in here real quick. One thing that I feel very uh, blessed with, I guess, with working at TechSmith is um, we've always felt like we have control. If it's the video tutorial that we're working on, I always feel like it's like our manager says, you you own that video so you decide if if it's worth making the change or not um, when you get that feedback don't feel like everything that comes your way you have to change so i always felt like that's pretty awesome that we can kind of have final say in a, in a sense um on on what we produce um but then um so it kind of goes through stages then we take it back we make corrections as needed and then it and then we produce it out a tier two video might be where um, you may script it out, you may not. Um, you do your screen recording and you may run it through a, a, a quick review process, but the actual time and quality, I would say, um, for it isn't targeted as high as the tier one. The tier three video, as you guys could probably guess where, we're, where I'm headed here, is um, just kind of a hit the record button and go, kind of a, a quick, quick answer to a question uh, maybe it's a webinar style video or something like that. Not a ton of editing to it and, and share that out. Um, so Jason, I think has a, a spaghetti, <laughs> spaghetti sauce uh, story that kind of goes along with it that might help with the description. <laughs> yeah, I, I think your description is pretty solid, Ryan. It really comes yeah. down to the number of reviews. But uh, yeah, the spaghetti tiers is tier one is grandmas or moms. It's the ultimate gold standard by which you you judge all other spaghettis. It cannot be off by a little bit. It tastes perfect every single time. Where tier two is like your friend's spaghetti where it's really good. I mean, it's pretty good. It, it, you might interchange a few ingredients here or there, but it's not mom's at all or not your grandma's. And then tier three spaghetti, it looks like spaghetti, kind of tastes like it. It'll do in a pinch. You can get it out, mass produce it really fast, but it's not as good as your friend's and it's definitely not your mom's or your grandma's. So that's, I was trying to, wrap my mind around the tiered approach when we implemented it about a year and a half, almost two years ago now. Um, so I always find that humorous, but it still rings true. And it's exactly what Ryan says. I would boil it down to the tiers, uh, the higher the tier and, and far tier one, it's the number of 
eyeballs on it and the number of time eyeballs get on it as far as review purposes. Whereas as the tiers drop down, uh, quick, get it out, learn it, teach it, move on to the next one. So in the time it takes to make one tier one video, someone might be able to make four or five tier three videos. So that gives you kind of a, a gauge. Yeah, well, uh, I've been flashing spaghetti up on the screen, Jason. Just every time you yeah. said the word spaghetti, it's it's important to know that. Uh, so a question I have, because I think for a lot of organizations, the the idea of putting out something that isn't the best, like, mm -hmm. like I think some organizations are going to be like, tier one, yes, we are all in, we will do that. And obviously the cost time is great. But they get really nervous about tier, tier two, maybe, okay, maybe tier three is like, oh my gosh, we don't want anything out there that's going to be less than professional, less than quality, because it we don't want it to misrepresent us. Like, there's all these concerns. And I think, you know, I'm curious here, for anyone who's hearing this and that's maybe thinking about this, what what are the conversations that you need to have or what what would you recommend to someone who's like, I want to try this strategy, I want to make be able to make some lower tiered videos, but they're, you know they're going to get pushed back. How would you help that individual to be maybe help their management or leadership feel a little bit more comfortable with mm. those tier three videos? Because my guess is, if I can, I'll be honest, they're not garbage. Yeah. It's not like they're bad. It's just you're focusing effort in different places. Is that, but what else would you tell them? I mean, I think that's 100% fair, right? Ryan, what do you yeah. think? I mean, my thought is where it's going to live. What do you think? No, I think where it's going to live is is true. If you're going to have it front and center on your on your website, something that visitors coming to your site might see, you might want it to look as polished as possible. Um, if you're going out to social, using social media, using YouTube, um, for if you have a YouTube channel or something like that, I mean, maybe it's uh, those those quick hit type answering questions. Um, I think that's one of the things I struggle with a lot is the is the when you create i've created many videos some of them that i'm way more proud of than others and it's that when you hit that level of oh that was a really good i, I thought i did really well on that one are you setting that bar for yourself to say now this next one has to be even better or are you okay with saying you know what as long as the message is clear as long as who, what i'm creating is getting the point across that somebody can watch this and understand what i'm saying and actually then create it or do that task, then mm -hmm. I think job is done. So it's, 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 yeah, it's setting that stage of, of what level can, do you have to constantly hit every time or um, are there opportunities to, you know, just depending on the style of a video. Well, one thing, one yeah. thing I know, and I remember there's a video out there, Ryan, that you made. And it was like, I don't know, 35 minutes long. And at the time when you made this video, it was like horrendous that it was 35. Everyone's like 35 minutes. What the, how can we have a 35 minute long video? And we put it on YouTube. And this is back in the days when YouTube wasn't nearly as big as it is now and not nearly as much of a presence. And that thing just kept racking up views. And I think you probably, I don't know. Do you know the video I'm talking about? It's, it uh, was how you how, made a video. How I, how I make a video. Yep. I and, was so but, much younger then. <laughs> <laughs> we all were. A lot less gray hair, I think. <laughs> but I just remember that video being so like it wasn't like the high polished video. It wasn't like probably what we'd call a tier one video in your scheme of things. But that thing performed so well because it, it hit the need. And I and I love that about that video. And it's something I always kind of think about like what's you know, what, what's the most important piece of the video is, is it the, is it the overall quality or is it that you, you're being successful at answering the question, meeting the needs of the individuals? Yeah, I think it's a third part. I think it was that video, which I used when I joined TechSmith. So there you go, right? Shy of a decade ago. Uh, it was authentic and continues to be authentic. Knowing Ryan that I, the Ryan that I know now, that is a hundred percent him. There's no put on, there's no facade. It's authentic as it gets. So when you're talking about putting out high quality to lower tier videos, I think there's other two other considerations. Who's the audience? Is it like internal folks or clients that you have a longstanding relationship with? Or is it for the every person that might come to your page? And does that video have more than one job? Is it not only teaching someone how to do something, but is it acting almost like as a marketing tool to show what's possible with your tools as well? So because these videos have so many hats to wear themselves, 
that's also another consideration when you're talking about what tiered video to put out. Um, if they're trying to get a lot of content out and you have a small team, you have to judge whether or not one or two videos every couple weeks is okay. Or if you want to get four or five out or depending on, you know, totally depends on the speed and the capability of the editor, because we also script, uh, build, write and shoot and record and produce our individual videos. We don't have an entire team. Like someone does the VO, someone does the on-screen content. No, we do everything individually. Uh, and then collectively as a reviewer. So there's another consideration there. If you have a team, maybe the tiers are easy to change up for us because we're doing it um, soloed uh, per each project. It's it's a different approach. Yeah, makes sense. I wanna I wanna share a couple comments and questions here. We got uh, coming in from the chat. Uh, just one comment, as, uh, kind of going along with the conversation from Garth is internal versus external can be a concern as well. Video for the team versus video for clients, which I think is a, a super valid point. You're, the work that you two are doing is primarily externally facing, although you, you, you do some internal training for a TechSmith, teaching us all how to be better at the products as well. But I think it's, it's mm -hmm. just a great, it's a valid point because the quality maybe can differ. I know internally I can probably get away with some things that externally I might not be as comfortable with. And uh, uh, then again, sometimes I think internal is always hard because you want to put your best foot forward with your coworkers. Mm. So, but Garth asked a question that I think w w I want to come to. It's, it's, he asks, what's the best way to deal with last minute changes as in a new release? Is there something to build into the workflow to handle that? So this is a really great question because we're talking about these tiers and you know, like you're going along, you're planning this really polished video tier one, it's gonna be awesome. And last minute, something goes wrong and something changes, something happens. And I know this is a reality because I've lived it with you guys before. We've been there with product. But I'm curious at, at where you're at now, what's going through your mind when that's happening? What kind of per things are you putting in place to help with that and deal with those types of situations? Go ahead, Jason. I think this one sits really well with you with the, <laughs> with the Camtasia releases. So we are honored and blessed to have development staffs that move at a very rapid pace, right? So they, they may believe that something might not get finished in a certain amount of time and then it does because they were able to crank something out, solve the problem, whatever it ends up being. Um, we actually work through that kind of challenge uh, at, with our latest release. And I think the thing you have to do is either uh, draw a, a line in the sand that says by this date, the position the product is in at that point is what the video is going to be. Mm -hmm. And then we will just uh, do a fast follow, so to speak. Like we'll say within the first month of the release, we'll supplement with a few other videos or be flexible enough to want a, as we would do a tier one style video, but because of the rate of change and the opportunity to introduce something that's brand new, especially, especially if it's something that's new to the product, that's part of a pretty critical workflow. Maybe it's just a faster video, a, t a lower tiered video that doesn't require so much uh, review time and lead up time. So you can turn it around um, at, at, a, at a later date is in terms of making sure things are updated within the product. Well, I love the idea of setting, first of all, setting expectations that this is where, what we're gonna be, you know, cause you have deadlines. That's, I think that's, uh, mm -hmm. we'd call it in certain spaces, equal business stature with development, right? They, they are amazing. And it is awesome when they solve those problems faster than, than you anticipate. However, having that equal business stature is super important, it feels like. Uh, and then it sounds like Jason, you guys got levers and switches you can turn, right? Like having the, just by having tiered approaches, you could say, well, kind we can do a, a tier three. We won't get a tier one done, but we can do a tier three. At least there's something to that. So it does sound like there's kind of solutions. Yeah, and the thing that I think, and Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong here, but after a year and a half or so of this iteration of our team, and when we actually t mentally think about this tiered approach, I think they're really starting to blend together a little bit, right? What what I would describe as a tier three video at the beginning of my skill set might have bumped into a tier two just because I'm getting better at making videos and better at uh, organizing things, or I'm taking tips from Ryan or Chandra about organization or scripting mm -hmm. ideas. There's a lot of things that help kind of blur those lines. I, mean, I don't know if you would agree with that or not, Ryan. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with it, and I, I also have to remind myself too, and then. And this is just comes usually through conversations on our team is that, you know, if, if something in the development doesn't quite get done by the time we don't, 
everything doesn't necessarily have to go out on day one of the new release. How, how many people are going to update or upgrade or whatever on day one? You know, it might be that other than I that. Will. <laughs> um, but, but there are that whole, the whole drip learning um, idea and things like that of being able to, instead of having everything thrown out there is to maybe, you know what, next week we're going to add another video or another two videos and, and do it that way. So it's kind of, yes, you do want to have, it's always nice to say, Hey, we hit the deadline and got everything done at release time or whatever the date is, but take a, just take a deep breath, step back and say, all right, how can we still make this work and still be successful with it and not stress too much about, you know, the, the issue that, that may come up. Well, mm -hmm. in the, the immortal words of Mr. Miyagi, breathe. It's very important, right? So, like, I, I love that, Ryan. And you, you mentioned drip. And I, I know one of the things you'd asked to, that we talked about that you wanted to talk a little bit about your the things you're going to be doing with email. Could you just go ahead and mention, is that okay to mention now? Because I think it fits in with this idea of dripping out content. Um, you hear a dog barking in the background? That's perfect. <laughs> the, the dog is so excited about, uh, about drip so campaigns. So excited. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, hold that thought. Uh, so let me ask you, yeah. I'm going to ask a question, Jason. We'll, we'll put it to you. Uh, Jane Davids yeah. is asking a question. I think uh, this Ryan can answer this too, but it's, he, she's asking, Jane, if you just if missed her, we had her on the show. Fantastic mm -hmm. information. Uh, Great trying episode. To get, yeah, wonderful stuff. Uh, so she's asked, trying to get more comfortable at releasing tier three style videos. Any mm -hmm. advice on how to get comfortable with the tier three videos? And I think this, this is a great Do question because... Well, that, that was a fast. You didn't let me finish the my my commentary Sorry. on the question. But, no, it's Please great. Please give the commentary. Well, I was gonna say this yeah. is. I think this is a real fear, right? I, I think not only from an organizational standpoint, but from an individual standpoint, because uh, we we want to look our best, and video is an mm -hmm. almost an immortal format, right? Like it's gonna be out there, and if it's not good, people aren't shy to tell you. My analogy remains this, Matt. Uh, both Ryan and I are, are former and kind of current classroom educators, right? We've both been in the classroom for a long time. Uh, the analogy I give for this is that, have you ever been in a classroom where the professor or the teacher walked in and said, you know, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, and tripped over their words and told you to forget everything they just said, walked back out of the classroom, came back into the classroom and started over completely? does not happen, right? You say what you say and you roll with the punches. And knowing Jane, she is a professional. She's a subject matter expert. She should remain confident in the fact that she knows what she's talking about. Just because you might say a um or an ah or a <clears throat> as you're, it, that's, you're a human being, you're not a robot, make sure that gets conveyed in your content as long as you're comfortable with it. There's a comfort level, yeah, but as far as getting more comfortable with doing tier three videos, just do them. Just get them out there and see how they feel. Okay, so here's the thing, Jason. You are you you come across, and I don't know if you are or not re really, but you come across very confident. So Ryan, what would you say to Jane? Because <laughs> I, I agree with Jason 100%. His advice is do it. I love it, but for you, I I think you tend to come across a little bit more like uh, shy. You know, you you worry a little bit more I like I, I do. What what advice do you give to Jane? Because I we love Jason, but it's. I think it could be easily construed as Jason is just like, yeah, of course, he's good at this. His, listen to his, did you hear his voice? You hear that microphone? Uh, it sounds so good, right? right? But for the no, rest I... of us average humans <laughs> who don't have great, who are nasally, what what would you say, Ryan? To get better at tier three videos. Uh, I wish I was more like Jason, for one. <laughs> um, <laughs> have, have dogs in your videos that bark in the background. You know, keep those in there because... You know, maybe people like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's hard. You know, it's it's it is hard for me to to do a tier three video. I'm not really good at just hitting record and talking into the camera, and my words tend to stumble over each other. And I'm a big script writer. I have to write my script out. I have to practice it. I have to read my script multiple times. You know, to get it to where I feel like it's good enough. Um, but yeah, confidence is a big a big thing. Uh, but in, in the end, um, surround yourself with people who can help build you up, like Jason and Matt. And uh, you know, and, and you know, it's just I, I agree with Jason. You just have to kind of do it, get it out there, and iterate, and uh, make improvements where you can. Uh, you know, 
I think it's it's a challenge. It can be a challenge, but you know, if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, and I'll just say this because I'm picking on Jason quite a bit here, but he, I mean, he, you guys are both fantastic. Uh, and my, my, what I would say to Jane at this is, I mean, look at look what I do every single week. I, this is a tier three video at its finest, right? Like we're <laughs> we're making up as we go. But the thing is, if we can just, uh, and we've talked about this principle before, the one percent principle, right? Just every time you do the video, mm -hmm. a, a tier three video, tier two, two video, tier one video, whatever it might be, that one percent, uh, you do that enough times, and you're gonna be a hundred percent better. And that's you know, and that might be what feel like, well, that's not much better if I'm only a hundred percent better, but. I think what's going to happen is you're going to see that those habits, those the, that practice is just going to continue to eventually, it's, it might feel slow at first, but it's going to then get to the, the kind of exponential at some point where, and then, uh, you know, and even then you might just mm -hmm. kind of level out, right? Like I think a lot of us uh, that make video as I do, maybe not Jason and Ryan who are making tutorials all the time, you know, you kind of get that intermediate stage and then you don't really need to become the expert professional. And so it's okay. Like people will accept it for what it is, but okay, guys, we're going to take a, a, a quick sidebar break here because last week we introduced a whole new segment. Uh, it's a really short segment, but we want to recognize people in the community who are making great stuff, who are making great videos. And it could, it just happens. The first two are about Camtasia tutorials. It doesn't have to be that. We want to see what people are making with Snagit. What are they making with TechSmith Capture? Uh, what are they making with Camtasia? Are other tools, if they're doing something that's just really amazing video, amazing image kind of uh, documentation, customer education, we want to just highlight them. So we're doing something that we're calling the TechSmith High Five. So high five, everybody. And this week, we want to feature Gord Eisman. He, he just released a video not too long ago about Camtasia 2021. They emphasize audio effect. And I, I watched through it and, you know, I understood how the principle worked and what it was doing, but he got into some nuances that I thought were really fantastic. He just lays it all out there. And Gord, if you don't know Gord, it has been fantastic to watch Gord grow as a creator. I met him at a, a, a TechSmith event a, a number of years ago, and uh, I was asking tons of questions, and he just watched him grow on his YouTube channel and get involved in making more and more videos and, and really have just a, a fantastic explanation of uh, just audio ducking, which is which is a new feature, which I thought was really great. So we'll we'll put in his link to that video in the chat. So go give him a high five, leave a comment, like his thing, let him know that we sent you, because high five to Gord. He's he's a fantastic human as well. So good choice, good choice. Yeah, we we like Gord. All right, I want to shift gears a little bit. We've been talking about process stuff, but but I've got like. If we're, we're, you know, putting people on, on pedestals here, if we look at the number of the best creators with Camtasia that know Camtasia the best. I used to count myself up there. I, I don't, I'm not anywhere near the top 10% anymore. I, I, I fall on a little bit. But you guys know Camtasia inside and out. You know video creation, tutorial creation better than anyone. So I want to talk about your tips because let's get really practical. Let's give good advice mm -hmm. here. Uh, so we're going to start, and we'll start a little open with this first one. Uh, what is your most off given and important tip for creating tutorial videos that you, you like to share? So something that you share all the time with people to make them better at tutorial videos. I think Ryan's got a dog barking. So Jason, we'll go with you. <laughs> so, so, so my most often given tip with using Camtasia, actually, I, uh, try to introduce people to, and teach them best practices around using the library. Uh, the library can save so much time over multiple videos where you can store content in there. I mean, I've got all the text with branding in there, all our colorways and the themes, uh, all our logos and icons and cursors when we fake cursors and stuff like that. Um, helping future Jason is an important thing to me. So anytime I can help somebody prep themselves for their next video, whether it's today, tomorrow, or six weeks down the road, always about libraries and theming. That's awesome. Yeah. What a, what a great, great piece of advice. How about you, Ryan? What, what do you tell people? Uh, for me, this isn't anything like new and fresh, but script writing, honestly, right out of script. And I saw Jane had posted a, a, a comment about her uh, tier three videos unscripted are way too long. If she, if she scripts them out more planning, they're much shorter to mm -hmm. the point, much better for the viewer. I agree 100%. If I, were to do a video scripted and then I would do that same video unscripted, it'd probably be twice as long as the other one just with, and so, um, that's just, I guess my number one would be 
know what you, <laughs> scripting helps you plan out and know exactly what you're showing uh, for the video. Yeah, I, I love that. Jason. You talk about iteration earlier, uh, right off of Ryan's, my tier threes are typically hit record and go. Uh, my tier threes have iterated and grown because my non-scripted videos, Jane, are now at least bullet point lists so that I don't veer off into the the wide, wide world of my brain and talking constantly about stuff that's not on focus topic. So uh, I hear you. But uh, yeah, script. I will agree with Ryan. And I had to come around to that script writing definitely will save you time and make it a more focused, controlled video. Yeah, I think I mean, even I, I like what you said, Jason, bullet points too, right? Something just to guide and make sure you're you're hitting all the I always forget. Like, it's not that I, I talk a lot, which is a thing too. But like, I think just even just not missing the key thing and getting done with it and being like, oh, I got to do it again because it's so hard to, it's easier to cut stuff out than it is to go back and add it in, especially in a workflow mm -hmm. or process. Well, let me ask you this then. So, okay, and, and Jason, yours might go along, what you just answered might hit a little bit along the idea here, but what's a feature, mm -hmm. functionality, something that you can do in Camtasia that you think everyone should know about, but most people don't even know that it exists? Is there anything like, you would, it's not secret, we're not hiding things, right. but like you're just like, man, I wish people more people knew about this because it is super cool. I mean, library could kind of fit in that, but what else? Ryan, we'll start with you this time. Thank you, because Jason was probably gonna steal mine. So <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the you build out your video on the timeline and you change your mind and or not change your mind, but you realize I have to put a title slide at the beginning or something. So holding down the shift key, putting the playhead at zero, clicking and dragging the playhead with the shift key down is going to move everything to the right, keep everything in sync, all your call outs, all your audio, video and everything. Then you can make do your title slide and everything. And then same thing, double click to select the end of that shift, drag the playhead back and it puts everything there. So to me, that's a very hidden feature that when we share that during trainings or webinars, people are like, oh my gosh, you've saved me so much time. So mm -hmm. shift, drag, playhead. Shift, drag, play. I love that. I don't think I've done it. So I, I think I've just learned. See, this is why I'm not in the top 10% of all Camtasia users anymore. <laughs> I just don't know all the secret features. Jason, what about you? What's that one thing that you wish people, you uh, want people to know about that just gets overlooked? Can I do two? Sure. Yeah, of course. All right. So. So number one is with the release of Camtasia 2021 is the audio uh, emphasize audio that we're talking about from Gord's video. Um, this is just a great way for you to introduce music. We just I just didn't use music in videos because it took a lot of time to add audio points, bring down volumes, make sure that it, it just took too much time. I literally click and drag auto uh, audio emphasize to my spoken word matters not what music I have. And all of a sudden it gives those videos character. So that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is, uh, especially on Camtasia on the Windows side, we have animations, right? If you go to the animations tab, there's a custom animation sitting up there on the left and then a whole bunch of pre-built ones. Uh, my advice and recommendation for people and once we show them how to use it is to learn how to use that custom animation because you have complete control over what it does. And once you learn the principles around it, which might take a couple of minutes, I guarantee you to take less than 10 to learn it. You can do all those pre-built ones and innumerous more. Uh, you can make things move, fade out, spin, translate, trans move, move, jump. I'm making up words. It's so amazing, <laughs> right? But the custom animation, I ignore everything else in that menu, teach the custom animation and tell Camtasia what I want it to do as far as movement on the screen. So that, that's definitely something that I talk to people about as a uh, underutilized feature. Yeah, uh, another another fantastic tip. I wanna shift, uh, it's, it's less of a Camtasia question, but I, it's super related to anything if you're doing videos with Camtasia. You are both remote employees, have been even pre the world going crazy. Um, but mm -hmm. one of the, so one of the big concerns people have with video is audio. We know it's a big factor in what people consider to be make for great videos. So your tier one videos, you want good, but even your tier three videos, you want good audio, right? What tips would you give us about getting better audio or good audio, especially outside of a studio, um, you know, in a, in a remote work setting? Cause I think that's a lot of people are in this situation. So how do you do it? Like what, what, what can you do? What would you, what advice would you give us? 
Uh, this first is go to Text with Academy. <laughs> <laughs> I like audio, right? <laughs> one, go check out Text with Academy. We have an entire one on getting better audio. Uh, it was a really fun one. I happen to be in it. That's not why I'm telling you to go watch it. it it's, it's great, 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 great information. Great uh, it's something that you actually taught me, Matt, about cameras a long time ago that I would uh, translate to audio, better audio. Uh, test out and learn about the device you have available to you. Whether it's some $20 stand mic on your desk or a $500 mic that don't buy a $500 mic, a you know real expensive mic that you have on your desk or this one that I've been using for seven years now and I just, I know how it sounds. I know where to place it because I've practiced with it and I don't have to read long stories or anything like that. I shoot a minute long video or I read a script that I have. Know the placement, which I always describe as the, uh, the hang loose method, which is the distance between your pinky and your thumb, if you uh, talk in a normal voice and that's how far your mic is away from you, you're going to get pretty good audio. And everything from dampening your walls to you know, having softer surfaces for things to bounce off of, uh, all those things come into play. Volume on your computer. You'd be amazed at how much of a positive difference you could make in your videos by adjusting that gain slider that suggests the input volume of your microphone. So that, that's what I would say. Yeah. Ryan, anything to add there? Um, yes, I think Jason, I agree a hundred percent. I think also, um, reading when you, for me, I record my audio separately than the video. Um, so I'll record my audio and sometimes when I'm recording my audio, I'll, it's, if you make a mistake, you know, pause, whatever, and, and record it again. Or when you when you record your audio, if you think in your head, I could say that a little bit better or make it a little bit sound a little bit better. Just pause, do it again, and then during the editing process, just clean it up and get rid of those ones that you um, weren't, weren't as happy with. So it, it's, it's kind of a process, uh, but if you take your time and relax, breathe again, um, yeah, just... Uh, Speak like you're you're talking to to your mom or, or whomever. So, yeah, I think when I think I, I don't know if Doug when Doug Brunner, who is a manager of the customer education team at Techsmith, I don't know if he gave that tip when he was on the Visual Lounge a couple. Oh, it's been a little bit while now, but it, the, I love that tip that you guys give is the uh, say hey mom before you read a line, hey mom, and then say like hey mom, did you know that Camtasia could do blah 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 blah, and just makes it more friendly and warm. It's 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 a it's a, it's a great tip. So uh, I want to get to another question here, and we're gonna we're almost out of time, believe it or not, because we're gonna get to our speed round wow. questions here soon. But Gord Eisman, Gord, we're so glad that you're here today, and we're glad that we hope you got feel that high five that we gave you. Uh, Gord wants to know what do you think about longer versus shorter tutorial videos? When to go long? He says, for me, some tutorial videos require a lot of detailed steps to explain, and therefore are a little longer. You guys have. Like I remember Ryan, probably when Ryan and I were on a team together, like we worried about video length, but because our videos could only, Ryan, I don't know if you remember this, but our videos could only be four megabytes in size. If it was bigger than that, we couldn't put them on the website because <laughs> no one could watch them. Uh, that's how old we are, four, four megabytes. And so t length of video was a real big concern because we were using, I think, SWF or FLV file formats, which also explode pretty quickly. Um, but when you guys are making your videos is how much is length time of video a concern? Go ahead, Jason, if you have, or you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead and go. Cause I'm not sure where my brain's going to go with this one. I have some ideas. Yeah. I'm just going to start talking and see where my brain goes too. But <laughs> we I, like it. I, I've cool. I've always, <laughs> I've always been the one who, when I, and I always share this during trainings, um, when someone sends you a link to a YouTube video and you, you click the link, what's the first thing you look at? And I always look at how long is this video? And that oftentimes determines whether I watch it or not, if I have enough time to do it. But when I create videos, I try to make them short, but I agree. I was reading through here with what Gord was saying, you know, sometimes longer it, the topic might need more, a longer video. And I guess, if it has to be a longer video, try to keep them engaged, try and keep it engaging so that, you know, it, so that when they're done, they're like, wow, that was a 10 minute video. It didn't feel like a 10 minute video. Um, so if that, if that's a goal, that if it has to be this long, what can you build into that video to make it seem like 
they're engaged and it doesn't seem like, like a lot of video. Hopefully yeah. that makes sense. Jason, anything to add? Yeah, I mean, what's this old saying? I didn't have time to write you a short letter, so I wrote you a long letter. It's, it's the same thing with video. Uh, if you can get in and get out in a timely fashion, whatever that means, in my mind, a timely fashion is three different ways. Uh, the little quick tip ones that Ryan was talking about that we made that are like a minute and 10 seconds long. Uh, our typical tutorials range somewhere between two and four-ish minutes. And then I've got one on there that's 20 plus minutes long because, as Gort said, context matters. Uh, I don't think you stick with one kind. I think you stick with whatever the content directs you to do. Sometimes it might be a quick one. Sometimes it might be a long one. I see no problem whatsoever with mixing up lengths uh, in the different kind of content that you create. I think it's fine. Yeah, I, you know, it's interesting because uh, we do, every couple of years we do a video viewer study. We look at preferences for people for videos. And for the last couple of years, and we've got new data, we've got, we're planning a future. We got, the, we just got data back. It's not ready to distribute and talk about yet, but we're gonna be doing a show here on the Visual Lounge with a, a very cool person who is not me uh, to talk about that. Uh, but what we're seeing consistently year over year is it's really interesting trend when you guys talk about video. And I think to Gord's point to, you know, Garth was in the comments saying, you know, short as possible, long as needed. I would suspect, I would have guessed before I saw all this data and have become really familiar with it, that if you said two to three minutes is most people's preference. I would have been, yeah, that's absolutely right. And I used to teach people like two to three minutes, two to three minutes, like cut it down. But what we see is there's actually a pretty big span between about three and 19 minutes that people prefer. They're actually saying, I prefer a video that's 10 minutes long or seven minutes long. And mm -hmm. part of it is, isn't about the length of the video. It's about the relevancy of the content to what they're trying to do. If you're teaching, so to Gord, I'd say, if you're teaching something really complex and you're trying to give a lot of detail about audio ducking, for instance, it's okay to go longer if it needs it. The trick is understanding when it does need it and when it doesn't, like really being harsh about cutting stuff and being like, yep, this has got to go. And then seeing if it, if it doesn't like ruin some of the flow. Um, but I think like we often think that topics need more time than they do. So we're, we're mm -hmm. biased in that way. So, cause it's easier to make as, uh, your point, Jason, a long letter, right? Write that, right. Make that long video. But I think if you can, you can really say, yep, this is really what it takes. It takes eight minutes to make this. This video really needs to be eight minutes. And all of that's going to be valuable, useful information. You're going to be doing some of the engaging, engaging pieces. You're going to make it feel like it's flowing. You know, to, just to another point, Bob Pike, who we have some interviews on the TechSmith Academy with. We've cut up some of his mm -hmm. video, that interview into shorter stuff you can find on YouTube. Fantastic. You know, he talks about classes. You know, we're not doing talking hour long classes. But he talks about the kind of the principle of like every eight minutes you need to reset with people, eight, eight or nine minutes, right? Reset with them, re-engage them. There's a book called Brain Rules. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't remember the author's name off the top of my head, but he says a similar thing about lectures. Like every 10 minutes, you got to re kind of reset the brain and get it to pay attention again. And I think with your videos, you have to be careful that one, you're focused on one topic, you're resetting, you're getting them to pay attention, you're engaging them and your topic really deserves it. So I've got, I don't have anything to say about this topic though. No, not at all. <laughs> and another consideration, Matt, is let's let's just assume, maybe rightfully so or wrongfully so, that the majority of people's content is going on YouTube. The advantage of doing it on a form, uh, a platform like YouTube, is even if you have a long form video, you can add those chapters, right? So that yeah. you, your long form video also can drill down into those specific components. Like maybe with Gord's, I knew everything I thought I knew about Emphasize Audio, except for this one little section he said at two minutes and 93, or two, 93 seconds. That'd be three minutes and 30 seconds, right? Uh, there was a way for me to drill down to exactly what I needed. So both the long form serves the people that want to learn everything, and then the chapters or short form little uh, tidbits allow you to get in, get what you need, and get out. So that's why I think there's a room and a place for both styles of video. And I want to thank uh, Pamela Swanson for reminding me. It was John Medina, and he's fantastic. If you ever get to read his book, yes. it's great. He's a great speaker. Uh, I definitely recommend it. All right, we are at time for the full-on questions. We're going to go into our speed round. So for those that are new to us, speed round questions are quick, fast responses, gentlemen. So we're not looking for the long answers. We're looking for short, quick answers. Ready? Here we go. Oh, look at that. It went to the wrong, wrong thing. But Jason, we're going to pull you, let's pull you yeah. up. You're first. What's right. something that helped you to be a better video creator, but was unexpected? 
Uh, reviews by other people. I kept them close to the chest, but when other people read and watch, they give you better results. Fantastic. Ryan, same question. Oh, man. The Camtasia Mac original release when I got to work with Khan and Heisel, and he walked me through the, the power behind planning, the planning, the planning. Um, I learned a ton from him during that release. Awesome. I, I remember those days. I remember lots of flip, flip charts and lots of papers and sticky notes. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I okay. Kept, we'll go. I kept wanting to say, let's make a video. And he'd be like, Ryan, calm down. No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Ryan, we'll go to you first. If you could make a video about any particular topic for TechSmith, what would it be? So it doesn't have to be in your planning schedule, but just there's a topic, anything that you're really itching to make a video about. Um, <laughs> my word. Jason, how about you? Jason. Brian, we'll come back. <laughs> how our team actually makes tutorial videos. We can talk about it all day long. It'd be really fun to show you the behind the scenes, uh, the, the chaos that is our offices, and how we actually make the videos top to bottom. Got to make a mini doc documentary. Yeah, so, kind of. Ryan, did you think of one? We'll no, pass. but I'll do the same thing, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, gentlemen, what is what is something that is making uh, who? Sorry, who is someone that's making videos that you admire or aspire to be like? Jason, we'll put you on the spot first. So, so someone uh, making I follow videos. A lot of, I follow a lot of techies. Uh, MKBHD. His channel is outstanding to me, and I've watched it grow over the years. Uh, engaging and informative with a exceptional artistic eye. MKHB, is that correct? MMKBHD. Marquez Brownlee, m most people know him, but it's MKB as in boy HD, like high definition. It, you won't you won't regret it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Ryan. Who do you who, who, is, who do you admire? Gord Iceman and Jane Davids, probably. Fantastic. <laughs> nice, nice, yep. nice pull there, Ryan. I love it. Uh, Thanks. Okay. If uh, what is something not related to video creation that you would love to do? So this doesn't have to be a work thing, but just something you'd, uh, it's not video creation. What's something that you would love to do? Pull up Jason. That we don't already do? I, that's that we would just you interpret the questions. <laughs> uh, I'm getting myself back into like public speaking and announcing uh, starting this winter. I'm becoming the public service announcer and the stadium announcer for my children's high school sporting events, basketball, football, lacrosse. So big booming voice. Lots of captive audience. That's awesome. That's that's so awesome. Ryan, how about you? What's something you'd love to do that's not video creation? Um, I'm gonna go with small on a small scale, some wood woodworking projects. Nothing nothing big or too crazy fancy, but just uh, tinkering on on things with woodworking. So, yeah, that's awesome. I I wish I was better at at either of those things, woodworking particularly, because mm -hmm. I might be valuable, but I'm terrible. <laughs> Can't, they can't do it. Okay, uh, one more question for each of you and then we'll, we'll turn the tables. Uh, so where do you turn for inspiration? So we talked about video creators, but could be that just like you're looking, you're feeling, oh gosh, I gotta make the, do this work. I need to get inspired. Where do you do, where do you turn to? Who wants to go first? I'm t I feel like I'm putting Ryan on the spot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I turn actually to our development staff. They, we do these innovation sprints every uh, six to eight weeks or so. And the things that they create are astounding to me and expand both how I think about what could happen with videos and what you could do with our product. So they're, they're always an inspiration to me. Amazing people. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, Ryan? I would say, I would say internally as well. Um, I'll just say like Troy and Kelly and Joe and Brooks and those guys make some really cool stuff and they're showing off what's coming with new, re with new features, new things like that. And the way they, they put it out there is just extremely engaging and just uh, really cool. And it's kind of makes me like, how do they do that? And I want to, I want to do mm -hmm. something like that. So. I'm, I'm always impressed and wondering like, oh, gosh, how did they do that? Like, how did they, like, they're just really good and they've got skills and talents that get used otherwise in the company, but are, it's fantastic. All right, so let's, we've got just a couple minutes left here before we need to, to close up. But the last question we like mm -hmm. to ask on the Visual Lounge is like, we like to turn the table and say, what's one question you'd like to ask me? So I'll let each have a crack at it. 
I'm ready. Uh, get the, get you get to turn the tables on me, Ryan. Who's the favorite employee at TechSmith that you hired? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> that's, a, that's a can I disclaimer? Please? We both worked for Matt at one point or another. <laughs> but to be fair, of the two of you, I've only actually hired. I did hire Ryan into TechSmith. I did his his interviews, yeah. made the offer. You know, Ryan. Uh, you, you are up there amongst the very top. Uh, I, I have been so lucky. Like, okay. So that's a, that's an unfair question. I, I feel your pain, yeah. Ryan. I, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. But let me just say this. I have been very fortunate in my career to, to work with so many wonderful people. And it, it, it spans the gamut of, uh, you know, yourself. Uh, I, gosh, I'm trying to think of, I can't even think of all the names of people that I've been able to hire in different positions. You know, we, uh, if anyone knows Anton Boland, Conan Heiselt, I, I, I love that, like, I think my first hires at TechSmith were some of my favorites and not because I don't love everybody else, but uh, I actually was talking to one of our former teammates who's, who's not at TechSmith any longer and, you know, just said, considering I didn't know what I was doing, we came together and formed this team, this instructional design team, which had never really existed at TechSmith before. And it was just kind of these magical days of like, the, the, the way that we could argue with each other and then walk away and be like still good friends. Um, the, the way I think we were innovating with the technology that we had, which, you know, 2006, seven, eight, wasn't, wasn't the same as it is today. Um, I just, I remember those days very fondly and, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun uh, because I think we really pushed each other to, to learn and grow. And we were making stuff up. Like no, we didn't have anyone to fall back on and say like, this is how, no one was telling us how we should make tutorial videos. No one was telling us that it should be this long or do be this style. We were just getting the chance to, to make blaze our own path and right or wrong. And we, I know there's a lot of wrong in there. Uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. So, but it was fun. Those days were really fun. And, but I've, I've been really fortunate. I work with so many great people that I've either hired or been on their part of their interviews or just gotten to know and TechSmith hires good people. And by the way, if you're looking for a position, TechSmith does have some opening <laughs> positions for anybody out there, especially if you're Quite a, a software developer, engineer. So, all right, Jason, what hit me up. What's your question? Uh, so Matt, you get to take all three of us somewhere in the world to conduct an in-person training. Where are we going and why? Oh gosh, that's, so we're going to go in person. Uh, I yep. think, have I, Jason, have we ever traveled for in-person training together before? Just a conference. Uh, we've been to shows, just conferences. We have not done training. Yeah. Brian and I have traveled a couple places to train, but we have not, Matt, you and I. Well, I mean, if we, if we get to go anywhere, let's go someplace really cool. Let's go down under. Let's go to Australia. Okay. And, and, and I, I just don't think we've had a lot of representation down there. I think it'd be cool to, to be in that part of the world. But, I mean, look, send me anywhere with you guys whatever company, whatever organization needs us. And, you know, they're in for one heck of a training because I, I think mm -hmm. be, I would just sit back and, and <laughs> if I'll record for you guys, take notes. You guys, <laughs> you guys can handle the training way better than I can. Uh, and Jane, Jane says London. Uh, of course, I'd love Please. to go to London, London again. I've, yes. I've been to classes there and um, it's always a good time. So Garth says, I was hoping for Pittsburgh. I'll go like you I'll go anywhere with you guys. That's that's the fun part about this job. So, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we are at time. I want to thank you both so much for taking time out of your guys' busy schedule and, and things that work that you need to be done. Uh, of course, if you guys want to reach out to Jason and Ryan, they're available uh, LinkedIn, on social media. You can you can always just find find them kind of wherever. Go look for their tutorials. Go check out, the, if you haven't seen the Camtasia TechSmith, uh, Snagit tutorials. These are two of the faces behind those. Uh, don't forget the rest of the team. They're doing fantastic work. We're so appreciative for you guys. And we just want to thank you again for being here. Thanks thank for you. having us, Matt. It was fun. Yeah. And thanks, everybody, for all their questions, too. So thanks. Absolutely. Well, again, hearty thanks to Jason and Ryan. We're so appreciative for our instructional design customer education team. They're fantastic. If you guys like what you're hearing, make sure you're sharing these episodes out. Share it with people. If you, if you learn something, Go ahead and post that on social media if you're so inclined. Tag us, tag TechSmith, myself. You can tag, hashtag the visual lounge. And if you have questions, you will have thoughts for who we should give a next high five to or a guest that you want to see, you can always email us at thevisuallounge at techsmith.com. And of course, the show can be found on any of your favorite podcasting platforms as well as on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Until next time with another great episode, 
We've got actually Jake Petchel will be here. He's another TechSmithy. He runs a lot of our Audiate program, so it should be really great to talk. We're going to talk a lot about audio if that's your thing. So we'll see you guys next time. And until next week, we'll see you later.